Uh, thank you, Ines, for the for your presentation. Now we can move to Elka Winston, and uh, she. Uh, Elka is the museum advisor of province of Ontario, Canada, and also the president of ICOM Canada. So that's what I say. We have many presidents and chairs here. So uh, let's welcome uh, Elka. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's going to be a hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm very happy to be here today, and thank you to Deborah for inviting me. Um, we have been working on a uh, project um, which is very immediate uh, because um, uh, it's uh, about the Ukrainian uh, her about Ukrainian heritage and the destruction of uh, Ukrainian cultural heritage during the Russian war against Ukraine. I'm a representative of the Canadian Coalition for Cultural Heritage in Ukraine. Um, in March 2022, the coalition brought together leading Canadian heritage organizations to consolidate knowledge and ex expertise while raising funds to support the protection of cultural heritage in Ukraine. So um, what we actually did was in April, we had a panel uh, that we convened with the Canadian Museum of Human Rights. and. Um, the, uh, there were uh, several speakers on the panel, including Katerina Chuyeva, who was at this conference. She was speaking to us from Ukraine while there were bombs exploding less than 100 kilometers away from her. And um, so she was getting messages on, on her phone while she was speaking to us from the, this panel. Um, we're trying to help people on the ground in Ukrainian museums to uh, do protective me to use protective measures um, to take care of their collections, and uh, we're also trying to raise money for um, a stipend that uh, Ukrainian um, museum professionals are getting, uh, partly from the government, but also partly from NGOs uh, around the world. Obviously, we started this with the Russia-Ukraine war. Um, Canada is home to a large Ukrainian diaspora, and um, so we're working together as a coalition to show our solidarity and to support um, the long-standing efforts that Ukrainian Canadians have made in preserving their own cu cultural heritage. Uh, so our partners in Canada are um, Icon Canada, obviously. This initiative was actually started by ICOMOS Canada. So for those of you who don't know what ICOMOS is, um, they are for the protection of sites and monuments around the world. And so um, ICOMOS uh, invited ICOM Canada to participate in the coalition, and then we kind of went from there. So um, uh, the Canadian Museums Association is involved, um, obviously the Ukrainian Museum of Canada, uh, the both branches. Um, actually, there's, I think there's three branches, but two branches are very actively involved with the coalition. And uh, obviously, um, some government organizations like the Canadian Commission for UNESCO and the Canadian Conservation Institute as well. Library and Archives Canada is another partner, Parks Canada. But really, we've been trying to concentrate on um, creating the coalition with non-government organizations because government moves too slowly. And so we've been trying to fundraise uh, as an NGO, um, as a coalition, because um, uh, the Canadian government gave the World Monuments Fund $4.5 million, but that none of that money has been distributed yet. And I think they're sort of thinking about it as more of a reconstruction fund. Um, while uh, things are being uh, currently being destroyed and disappeared in Ukraine. Our Ukrainian partners on the ground are at the moment mainly hairy. Um, I, I'm sure some of you hear, heard from Vasil Roshko, who is part of Harry. Uh, so Heritage Emergency Rescue Initiative, um, and Ihor Poshevelo, who um, has also uh, been, we, we've been speaking to him on Zoom, we've been, Zoom, we've been um, talking to him and Vasil about what exactly Ukrainian museums actually need on the ground. 
we have been uh, basically trying to um, figure out, because things change so quickly, we've been trying to figure out what exactly, how exactly we can help in the best way. So um, we've been trying to get as much information as possible. Our achievements so far are um, that uh, the Canadian Association of Conservation Professionals, in combination with CCI, which is the Canadian Conservation Institute, has produced six educational vi uh, videos on conservation in crisis. Um, so there are a suite of videos in Ukraine, in, in Ukrainian, sorry, um, how to store papers, how to store objects, paintings, furniture, and photographs, and they're for lay people. They're for people who are not necessarily pr museum professionals. So um, anybody can can take one of these videos, can listen to the, watch the video, and learn how to do preservation of um, precious cultural heritage, and be able to help um, preserve it in place. Um, and that was very important for us as well, is that things not leave Ukraine. Things should stay there and they should be protected in place in Ukraine. Um, we've also partnered with Harry um, to send 200 fire protection blankets uh, to four museums in Ukraine. That's um, been uh, a little more complicated than we actually thought it was going to be, um, partly because there were so many hoops to jump through uh, for verification of bank accounts, verification of us as an organization with the Ukrainian government. Uh, and also um, because we contracted with a Ukrainian uh, company to create those, to, to make those fire blankets for us. And um, things are slow in Ukraine because of the situation there. The other thing that we're doing, of course, is we're building awareness of the coalition and we're also building awareness of, um, you know, trying to get uh, uh, awareness in Canada for fundraising and um, so that has been building and our communications have been building in Canada since uh, I would say about May. So we're still in the very early stages of people being aware of the organization. Part of our 2022 strategic plan for the coalition um, is, uh, I'm, and I'm not gonna read this all to you, um, but the things that Harry and other organizations have told us that they need are the solidarity stipend, uh, which is money for um, museum professionals and cultural heritage professionals on the ground, um, because Harry does distribute money to those folks. Um, provision of expertise, uh, some of which we've already done through the, the educational videos. Advocacy, obviously, and digitization, so securing fundi funding in kind from for donation of um, uh, digitization equipment and establishing a digitization in her on heritage in Ukraine. And Vasil Roshko has been very um, helpful in, in helping us to do that. So. Communications, fundraising, materials and procurement, education. Um, we have been talking to cultural defenders and acting as cultural defenders. And we are also doing reconst reconstruction planning um, and we're forming, Canada doesn't have a Blue Shield Committee, so we are um, forming a Blue Shield Committee in Canada uh, with the Canadian military. And there are a number of people, um, sorry, that's my next slide. There are a number of military professionals who, uh, and archeologists who are forming the Blue Shield Committee as well. Um, cultural heritage is the soul of a people. It tells its stories, traditions, way of life, and speaks of its identity. In times of conflict, an attack on heritage is an attack on the people. Um, and I invite you to uh, visit our website, um, and uh, it's up there on, on the board, and to check, uh, check and see what we're doing. We're communicating as much as we can on our social media sites. I hope that you will spread the word for uh, the Canadian Coalition for Cultural Heritage in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Elka. Any questions?
Thank you for that presentation. Um, very commendable. Um, and just uh, a reminder that um, wars, uh, pandemics will happen, wars will happen, uh, disasters, uh, natural dis disasters will happen in our lifetime and beyond. And that um, as museum professionals, we need to think about documenting our collections, documenting our buildings, our, our you know, immovable objects, so that when these things happen, we have a reference. So this is commendable, but just to remind us to try and get funding from our governments to document what we have, so that even if we lose it in the process of war, in the process of uh, natural disasters, that we have a reference that we can go to and probably reconstruct what we probably will, lo will lose. So thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Uh, I should say that there is an organization that a uh, joint initiative, I guess, um, between the United States, MIT started it, Stanford, and uh, there are a number of Canadian professionals as well who, uh, they're called Sucho, and what they have been doing is they have been doing a lot of documentation and digital archiving and uh, with the help of Amazon, um, Amazon has been letting them use their, their part of the, the, their memory on their servers. They have been collecting all of the digital archives from Ukraine and saving them. And there's a lot of people out there as well who are doing um, a video uh, digitization of buildings that are being destroyed, and all of that is going into that archive as well. So, um, very good point. But um, it, we we can't. Uh, I mean, Sucho's already doing it, so we're not. <laughs> if if I could address that, um, it's amazing how many museums, even in the United States, guy by the way, do, have not documented or digitized their collections. So that really, Linda, that's something that's universal, that we really need to get down to the task of all small museums, historical properties. Um, they have floods, and all of a sudden, everything's lost. So thank you for bringing that up. Hi, I'm Susan uh, van het Slot, also a board member of NPR. And I wanted to ask you that I know that there are many countries doing similar things. And are you joining voice forces so you don't double up and do Stuff like that, like that, that, is it like organized? <laughs> and can it be more organized uh, on your lap? <laughs> Um, we know that there are a lot of European countries that have been helping and sending money to Ukraine and sending um, materials. Part of the issue is that, in fact, it is not organized. And um, the, the, Harry was actually complaining to us that they got too much bubble wrap. <laughs> Um, and and they didn't really know what to do with it uh, because they don't have storage space. They don't have a, a, a storage area for it. I think we're not there yet. I think we're not we're not at the point where we can we we can join forces with the European countries. Although I know that Nemo has been working on it. What can we do to help? <laughs> She said, um, we, need, we need to help. Yeah, OK. <laughs> we can talk about it. Sure, sure. I think we need to talk to the Ukrainians. We need them to direct us. Yeah, yeah that's where the organization is central and happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm Katrin Savomagi from Estonia. We had uh, ICOM meeting in Tallinn and uh, CEDOC. And there were different lectures about it. I know that in, I think, that inside ICOM, the CEDOC committee maybe have more knowledge about it. 